The most meaningful announcement from the Shanghai Auto Show may have been from the Buick. The Buick. Most meaningful in the sense that Buick unveiled their Xiao Yao Super Architecture, a new platform that can offer all types of new energy vehicles from PHEVs, EREVs, to full battery electrics. Oh yeah, and they also showed three cool looking ice blue concept, plus an orange one that will soon be built on this platform and sold under the sub-brand Electra. So we can talk about how pretty they are in addition to all the nerdy details. This is meaningful here in America and Canada too, eh? Because China has been leading the design language for Buick, so we can expect to see something like them here. And could the Xiaoyao architecture become the new platform for General Motors plug-in vehicles? Let's take a look. When GM went through bankruptcy, it had to cut some of its brands to get more lean. Buick survived because it was a strong brand in the China market. It didn't take long for China to become Buick's largest market, outselling the U.S. More recently, though, the winds have shifted. U.S. sales are up, fueled by stylish, affordable, gas-powered models like the Invista and Encore GX, both of which are assembled in Korea and based on platforms engineered by GM Korea, formerly Daewoo. And they also sell the Envision, which is imported from China. So now the bulk of their U.S. lineup faces some sort of tariff. Meanwhile, gas-powered vehicles in China are seen as antiquated. They added a couple of plug-in hybrid models to show that they're still hip. I'm hip. Well, another approach would have been to leverage its Ultium platform from North America as a starting point for BEVs in China. From this, we get the Buick Electra E5, which is not exactly a Chevrolet Blazer EV, but it's close. Current GM Ultium EVs here are using batteries manufactured in partnership with LG Energy. But the Electra E5 uses batteries from a local joint venture with Cattle and SAIC, GM's partner in China. It's available with either ternary or three elements, so nickel, manganese, cobalt, or with a lithium iron phosphate battery. There's also the Electra E4, or should I say was, that is pretty much a reworked optic that offers LFP batteries from... BYD. That's cool. So GM sent their best EV platform to China, allowed their partners to locally source batteries and make some improvements. Huge success, right? Well, the Electra E5 with cattle batteries has not been a sales hit amid tough competition and a price war. And the Electra E4 with BYD batteries has pretty much disappeared from their website. GM's current BEVs, stop calling them Ultium, are very good, but technology is changing so rapidly that they need an update. In particular, those vehicles were designed to be only battery EVs. We're seeing in China, plug-in hybrids and extended range EVs are proving to be as popular. Last year, CEO Mary Barra said that GM is working to bring plug-in hybrid technology already in production in other markets. She could be talking about their current solutions like the GL8 PHEV, or it could be based on a newly developed Xiaoyao super architecture. It has been designed by GM and SAIC's engineering joint venture called Pan-Asia Technical Automotive Center, or PayTech. Tailor-made for the China market, Xiaoyao integrates technologies in four major areas— propulsion, chassis, intelligent driver assistance, and smart cabin. The platform they call 3x3x3. It can support different body styles popular in China, SUVs, sedans, and MPVs, but, you know, Altium has flexibility too. It can support front-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, or all-wheel drive, but, you know, the Blazer does that in one model off of the Altium platform. What it can do that Ultium can't is accommodate various new energy vehicle powertrains, PHEVs, EREVs, and BEVs. Another major advancement is the battery technology. 
GMSAIC is partnering with Cattle to offer lithium iron phosphate Ultra 6C charging batteries. Hey, wait, didn't Cattle just announce a second generation Shenzhen LFP battery that can charge up to 12C? Yes, they did. And I'm guessing these are based on the Shenzhen Plus LFP batteries that were considered revolutionary and announced just a year ago. But that's okay, because peak charging for the Xiaoyao Super Architecture will be up to 640 kilowatts and can add 200 miles of CLTC range in just 10 minutes. That's better than GM's current EVs. And as a side note, GM gave a presentation last year at Investor Day where their new VP of battery, Kurt Kelty, updated their strategy. GM had already announced that in addition to LG Energy, they'll be partnering with Samsung for battery manufacturing in America. Beyond that, they talked about future announcement for LFP batteries for the North American market that would significantly reduce costs. There were rumors that GM wanted TDK of Japan to license the cattle design and build a plant in America. This year, things have, well, let's just say they've changed a lot. Chevrolet opened up their order guide for 2026, and fleet customers can now get a Silverado 3WT, that's their work truck, with LFP batteries. GM expected that it would still deliver up to 350 miles of range, but more importantly, it could lead to a savings of $6,000 per truck. But where are they going to get those batteries from? Cattle would be a good guess, but that means they would come from China. So this evolving story is something that I'm keeping my eye out on. Beyond electric vehicle stuff, Buicks in China need to keep up with the competition. In the area of smart driving, China is clamping down on how companies promote and talk about their driver assistance systems, and they also need better smart cockpit technology. For China, GM has partnered with Momenta. This is separate from the work being done in the U.S. with people from the former Cruise Autonomous Vehicle Project. Buick plans to fully deploy level two urban driver assistance technology on some of its production vehicles this year. Another difference in China, their press releases love to talk about what chips they use, like you're buying a laptop or something, while we just tend to care about how many cup holders there are inside. This new electronic architecture has enough processing power to support a 50-inch augmented reality HUD, 8-screen immersive digital layout, and AI model integration. What does that do for you? I, I don't know, but it sounds really impressive. Finally, let's talk about Electra. It's an historic name within Buick and a great fit for their new energy vehicles. They call it a high-end new energy sub-brand. It kind of reminds me how Audi uses the e-tron name. They wanted to stand out to say that anything with the name Electra is a new energy vehicle, not an old combustion engine Buick. It sends a signal that Buick is changing and Electra is the new energy for the brand. The Buick Electra Encasa is a premium MPV. Yeah, it's a minivan. China loves minivans. And the Buick GL8 is kind of a legend in that space. Encasa will be more high-tech and offered as a plug-in hybrid like the current GL8 PHEV and as a battery electric, which is new for Buick. They showed a large sedan that appears to be the Electra L concept from last year. It was shown as a battery EV, but that pretty lower front fascia could easily be opened up to offer a PHEV powertrain. You can see that on BYD vehicles where the BEV model has a smooth front fascia while the PHEV model, or what they call DMI, has an air intake for the engine. We should assume that this model will become the new LaCrosse. The SUV next to it is a battery electric given the lack of an air intake. This will likely be the new Envision. All of these concepts have a single LiDAR sensor at the top, which has become popular over in China. So expect to see more vehicles in the West will add that bump too. The orange Electra GS concept is an exploration for Buick's future design language. And 
I, I think it's kind of hot. You can see it still wears the Buick logo, but it has the word Electra embossed in the bodywork to let you know that this Buick is bursting with new energy. And don't let the sporty styling fool you. It's big. It's nearly as long as a BMW i7. In China, Buick needs to convince buyers that it has the technology they want, plug-in vehicles and other cool stuff. But what I really want to know is if elements of the Xiaoyao super architecture could come to the United States. GM assumed they could leapfrog the competition and go all electric. Now they know they need to have some PHEVs in their portfolio too. And finally, what's GM's plans for LFP batteries? Expect an announcement soon for how they can bring production to America without any federal incentives. This is all really fun times for the auto industry, so hang in there and thanks for watching.